Good afternoon to you, our cherished and descending listeners. It's another beautiful and blessed Wednesday, and we here at Joy Business are happy to bring you another exciting edition of your favorite business development program on Radio Masterclass. Masterclass is powered by Joy Business and brought to us by Goyle. Goyle, they say good energy, Goyle, Yenara, Yedia. Masterclass is also brought to us by GCB, GCB, your bank for life. My name, as always, is Yabana Fue, and I'm happy to bring you today's edition of Masterclass. Here again on the show today, we're bringing you another edition of our Startup Dialogue series. A very exciting conversation we'll be having in, in this month, right here. And the exciting thing about the Startup Dialogue series, essentially, is that we go back into the field after having presented you with all the theories of management and principles of doing business and all the things you should do and things you shouldn't do. We come back into the market and then we ask you, Yes, you are entrepreneurs, you are listeners, you who are running your businesses and say that, listen, after having taught you the principles of customer service, the five P's of this, the five K's of that, do this right, do that right, recruit, hiring, keeping your books, accounting, digitization, protecting yourself from hackers and all of those things. What's the everyday experience like? You know, it's the 29th day of, of the month today. Salaries, I'm sure some have paid already, some are yet to pay. A business has not been as you expect it to be. Staff are expecting salaries. The bank, if they've not started calling, you know, if they've not already called you, will be calling you shortly. What's the daily experience for an entrepreneur here in Ghana? And the reason we do this is to be able to bring stories to you of people who have been able to start their own businesses, go through those difficult points where they would have otherwise have given up, where many have otherwise fallen, and they've gone past that point and bring their stories to you, number one, as encouragement, number two, as inspiration, and number three, as a learning point so that you can be able to learn from the things that they have done right. We always say that life is too short to make all the mistakes yourself, and therefore let's learn from, from the things that others have done right so that we can also become better. Our country can become better, and then our businesses can also become better. Here on the show, we've had a couple of young Ghanaian entrepreneurs come through. We had Lloyd Kusi, Penta Foods. We had Sewa Duku from Chop Shop last week. And one of my favorites so far, we had Amin Abubakar. Good afternoon to you, Amin, if you're listening. Young gentleman who started and found a way of producing coal for medicinal purposes, coal for producing fire, coal for doing all sorts of things, for doing shisha, and found a way of doing it, and he's won great contracts. Some of those things, for the sensitivity of it, we didn't mention it on the show, and I can't mention it today either. But he's making inroads. This guy is exporting it. And the beautiful thing about what he's doing is that he's not even looking to monopolize the process. He says, you come to me um, with your brand name and tell me where you want to plug into my value chain, and I will sit with you and have a conversation. And it's great, because it's great. It's creating opportunities for a lot of people. And we want a lot of young people to be inspired. We know that COVID um, brings a lot of bad memories for most of us because we, lo we, we lost some loved ones and people got sick. But COVID also did something really great. What it did was that it forced all of us to go into our rooms and watch television for a very long time during the lockdown. And people began to be ingenious and creative. And you find that many ideas were birthed in that, in that period where people were stuck indoors. And it goes on and on and on. Today, I have another wonderful... Gentleman uh, with me here on the, on the show, he's going to be telling us his story, um, his way, and we're going to learn from his experience as well. Um, I will not go through his resume. Normally, I like to do that, but I won't go through it because otherwise I take, from the, I take away from the story that he's going to tell us. He's in the person of Mr. Christian Boachi Yadom. It probably doesn't ring a bell if you don't know him, but if you've heard about the pizza man or chicken man, yes, I know that now it rings a bell. In your mind, the young Ghanaian who actually finished school and started decided to do this, and now he's all over the place. I was reading up on him uh, preparing for this show, and I, I thought he had six branches in Accra and I think seven or so in Kumasi. He tells me that he's got 10 branches in Accra now, and eight in Kumasi and counting. And whoever thought, I mean, sometimes you know, back in the day, we used to say, Oh, Ghanaians don't like to watch their leaning, better leaning in public. I remember sometime ago, a couple of friends came from the UK and said, Yeah. What kind of business can we do? Let's go into laundry. We say, oh, Ghanaians don't like to watch that. Who told you? People are eating pizza. People are selling coal. Amin was telling us that we say there's no money in Ghana. They are selling charcoal in game. And it's shop right. There are always things that you can do to make money. Just think, look at what others are doing and learn from it. Christian, you're welcome to the show today. I'm excited because when we started talking off air, the energy was great. <laughs> I mean, and I'm not going to give away the story yet, but I think that take us through your own experience. I think people have over the last three weeks, been excited about the deliveries we've had here because each person's story is unique in their own way and they go through their own challenges and their own processes. 
one of the things that um, I remember Amin said last week was that when he decided to sell charcoal and to produce it from the coconut husk, he thought to himself and said, the people who buy charcoal will not take charcoal advice from me. They will take charcoal advice from the woman down the road, Antiata. Antiata, good afternoon to you if you're listening, who has been selling charcoal for over 20 years. When Lloyd came in here, he says when he decided to make yogurt, he went to Nima to find out from the boys in Nima. Good afternoon to you, all the yogurt makers in Nima this afternoon. And he learned from them. And that's the point I make that there's no need to reinvent the wheel. Let's hear your story. Start, first of all, let's tell us who Christian is. Maybe people think that we have made you up. You're a fictional character. <laughs> <laughs> um, give us a bit of background. Okay. Maybe your education, maybe your family. And then we'll go into the business proper. Who's Christian? Uh, Christian Boache. You are the master see. Mm-hmm. Um, from high school, was in Kumasi Academy. So you were in Kumasi? You schooled in Kumasi? Yes, I schooled You've got classmates? Yes. Who can identify you? Of course. Okay, please, classmates <laughs> of Christian. When we get interactive, call so that people know that it's an original Ghanaian story. Yeah, so high school, I, I read science. I was in the science class. Right. I think I was the, I was the first science student to be in Timon Prefect and still be first in class. Right. Yes, and then okay. from high school, um, KNUSD, Actuarial Science. I was the actual science president. No, you did actual science. Yes, I was the president. You must have been a brainiac back in school. Uh, yeah, I am. <laughs> I am. I'm so, yeah, actual science. Uh, 2016, I was the association president. I was in Republic Hall, and Ripper. yeah, uh, once there was sexy morally. <laughs> they used to call me Abodie. Wow. I was, okay, I was, okay. So I that's your name. Built. Okay. Okay. Yes. Because, you know, a lot of people back in school don't remember our real names. Yes. I mean, there are funny stories about parents coming to look for the children and, and they mention their name, Eva and Sankoma, and they say, there's nobody here like that. Oh, okay. For then they'll say, about the, they say, ah, okay, okay. We oh, the, uh, the, 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 the real name that most of the students in Kenya University know me with is Chris B. Christian Boache, Chris B. Chris B. Because okay. in 2017, I also contested for SRC president. And I there lost. You go. <laughs> <laughs> yes. There you go. Yeah. So, uh, throughout the elections, I, I got that uh, fame. And then after school, no, even in final year, I decided to do something with the fame that I have. Mm-hmm. So, so I started capital. so many businesses. I mean, I did uh, sales of pen drives, calculators, you know, sales of this Adidas and Nike slides in Conti. Mm-hmm. And then later I ended up selling food. <laughs> yeah. And you're doing great at it. Yes. But it didn't just start, did it? I mean, it didn't just start easy. It didn't just, you know, just come to you on a silver platter. Oh, no, with the experience on cooking... Um, Started cooking at a very early age, at the age of eight. My grandma. So personally, you cook. Yes, my grandma used to play the choba. Right. My mom is a. What was it called? I'm sure people in Kumasi were. No, no, my mom. I mean, um, my grandma started the choba not in Kumasi, in her hometown, right. in Kranza. In Kranza. Her name is Amabo. She was very popular. She okay. was the. They call her the, the choba queen. So all the people in Kranza this afternoon <laughs> who are listening to so us, shout out to you. Yes. So, and then my big sister that actually trained me was also a Ketra. I, I lived it here. What's Big was, Sister's name? Uh, Ernestina Sakodie. Is she listening to us? Uh, I doubt she's in the Netherlands now. Okay. So at the age of eight, I started cooking. So cooking became part of me. I mean, I found it like a hobby. Right. Until final year, the roommate I settled with, Ebenezer Sumanamankwa, he's my co-founder mm-hmm. and the operations manager. Yeah, currently. I noticed. I, I mean, I saw it in your structure. Yes, yes, yes. So he actually... You know, made me feel like you can make money out of this. I mean, how many something? times have we not heard? You know, and I, I want to pause right there. How many times have we not heard about something you love to do easily and you can make money out of? I was telling the story of Ikea and Twatufo. She makes Bisap. And at some point, people said, You can do this, Ikea. And she started to do it and she started making money out of it. A lot of people, you hear them say, You know, they had it as a hobby. Yeah, you are talking about cooking as a hobby. Oh, yes. And now you're, you're making food. Yes, I, I loved cooking. I mean, in your public hall first year, those are my lane. Whenever you want food, come to my room. And I'm preparing all the types of meals, I mean, from local to continental. So cooking is actually part of me. And then me selling food, although it doesn't match with what I studied in school, mm-hmm. because everyone in my class knew that Chris, after first degree, is going Go to, to NASA. I mean, everybody <laughs> knew that Chris is going to be in their academia. And I also love teaching. I was a teaching assistant during my national service time. Right. I also love teaching. And I mean, my lecturers, I mean, at, at a point, I even thought I disappointed them. Mm. They were expecting me to, you know, further my studies in the States. Hey, and you have not disappointed anybody. Your man proposes. I mean, at a point. But God disposes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, at a point, that is how they felt. Because, you know, starting the business, 
in final year and mm. after school it didn't look like what you see now yeah it yeah. was quiet i wouldn't want to say it was terrible but then it it looked like nothing good will come out of it but i was seeing something different mm. you see mostly when visions come it's only the the bearer of the vision who understands it but the people around will only buy into it when it gets to a certain level so and and it's even something i want to punch here yeah. that when you have a brain child you have an idea that eureka moment um sometimes you know keep it a bit because like he's saying you're the only one who understands where you're taking it don't make it too conversational don't tell the whole world about it and then somebody will end up saying oh it's not a good idea yes. only for you to go to bed and wake up and see that they are doing it yeah you know so try and guard some of these brain childs until they are mature enough to go out and then you can put them out yeah right yeah. let's keep talking about about the experience and then let's go to how you started mm -hmm. how you started did you start while you were in school yes in final year second semester i think um in 2017 december myself and eben we were in the same room so yes. when you're going home we thank god for good roommates eh? oh yes <laughs> <laughs> so when, when you were living for accra i mean i lived in accra you lived in tema right so we all gave ourselves assignments that you have to come back to school next semester with a business idea mm -hmm. because the businesses we we tried that semester they all failed right we did some sort of you know should i say money lending in a way mm -hmm. We did uh, this set of uh, pen drives and calculators, you know, we got messed up. We even went to the extent of selling this uh, silicone brazier for, for ladies. I mean, mm -hmm. anything for the money you were doing mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. So we felt that those businesses were not working well enough for us. So we are coming back to school the next semester. That's the final year, second semester with the new business idea. So in 2018, January, I, mean, I think I got mine around 27 December mm -hmm. and I kept it. Your idea? Yeah, the pizza, the pizza thing. Mm -hmm. Initially, it was for us to sell pizza in slices because we realized that during student programs, they've been serving meat pie and rock bands and cakes for item 13. And I just wanted to change the face of how item 13 should you know, appear. It shouldn't mm -hmm. always be the one way type. Mm -hmm. So I thought of selling pizza in slices. So I came to school the next semester. I, I, I took the lead to Kumasi, so Evan was still in Accra. Mm -hmm. He got back to Kumasi and I told him that, bro, you have to accompany me. I have to go and get some item from town. He didn't even bother to ask what you're going to buy. Mm -hmm. He was like, let's go. So we went to a doom. There's a man called Ofata mm -hmm. and another man called Kolege. Mm -hmm. A doom around Boss FM. They are mm -hmm. very popular. They, they sell is, it, this. is it the same Kolege on social media? I doubt. He, he's not a social media type. Okay. So under one big tree, they sell these used ovens around that tree. Mm -hmm. So we went there and I told the man that um, I need an oven and we're using it to bake pizza. So he suggested an electric oven for us. So when I took the oven and even asked, what are you going to do? So we are going to sell pizza. He said, hey, <laughs> like, I mean, is, is that where we are now? I said, yeah. So, okay. So we bought the oven, sent it to our room. We, we had no shop mm -hmm. and we are living in the hostel room. So it was more or less like a homestay. You see, we had this hostel and then when you move out of campus to a different place, you call it the homestay. Mm -hmm. So we sent the oven to the homestay in our hall. So we had to, you know, convert the hall into a kitchen mm -hmm. and start selling. So that's how we started. We started with a second hand oven from a doom. One afternoon, I just got the edge that I have to sell the pizza and I don't want to rest on this idea. Mm -hmm. So I remember I You didn't have peace about it. I mean, when the idea came to you, yes. it kept bugging yes. you until you acted yes. on you it. You just needed to act and make, start making money. I mean, the goal is start making money. Mm. So we picked the, the oven to the room and then we started. We started very inexperienced, trust me. I mean, the cooking I knew wasn't pizza. I was coming there that you, you had the dream, <laughs> you had bought the oven. Yes. You're like, I hey, I'm saying, Father, we have the firewood, yeah. Yeah, but where is the lamp? Where is the lamp? How did you learn how to make pizza? Okay. Because the idea came to you, pizza. Mm -hmm. I'm sure you were sleeping and you woke up in the middle of the night and you saw pizza. Fine. But did you think of how you were going to learn how to make it? Were you going to buy it? Were you going to order it from someone? How were you going to do it? If you order, if you order a finished product, you never get to know how to do it. Mm -hmm. So I have this guy, his name is Prince Owusu. Mm -hmm. We call him Black. Mm -hmm. I met Black in 2017, way before I even decided to do pizza. But I also realized Black has ideas about cooking. So it's like, he also lived with a chef, with a, with a caterer. I also lived with a caterer, so we, we share ideas. So I called Black around that, Black, we have to sell pizza. So if you have any ideas, come around and let's put things together and start. So mm -hmm. we started with the dough mixing, did some pizza sauce. 
and then about the toppings. I remember. Did you I, read about it online? Oh yes, I most of my research that I did was on YouTube and Wikipedia. I mean, I just I just read wide. You know? And that's another thing. You see, these days you don't have to do things manually again. There's a lot of information available online. Yeah. He's talking about YouTube. Yeah. People teach themselves how to do things they otherwise never knew how to do just by watching learning videos. So you are, you are listening to us this afternoon. You're thinking, what can I do? Once you get the idea, trust me, the learning video is available somewhere on the internet. Go and look for it and teach yourself how to do it. And then go ahead and do it. So we started with our first pizza. We did the samples and it was good. I mean, at that point it was Even good. if you say so. Or you, you ask other people to... T- oh, yes. I got a couple of friends to come around to taste. Yeah. You know, because I did a, I did a student politics, I mean, my, my friends were those who had won positions at the various colleges and the right. SRC. So I called them around because they were the people I was targeting to sell the pizza to mm. during their events. So I remember I called one lady uh, with uncle. She was the then SRC Women's Commissioner. Uh, is it Denis Sapon? He was the College of Humanity Social Science mm-hmm. President. Augustine Chumessi was the... College financial of science students. So I called all of them around and then we took samples and they were like, it's good. So when I, when I going to start So the selling, first pizza was what? The first pizza, <laughs> I don't even have a name for it. We just, <laughs> you we just scattered put, everything on what it. What did yeah. you put in it? What did you put uh, in we, it? We did a little bit of beef, chicken, some green pepper, onions. Uh, yeah, some. Just mixed it. We just mixed it. I mean, there was no formula. You, you just see, had to come out as yes, pizza. Yes, yes. There was no formula. So we did a sample, it was good. And I took my first contract from the then woman uh, commissioner. Mm-hmm. I took a hundred of thousand slices. She had a 1, program. Slices. Yes. So it's like two cities, two cities, thousand. That was two thousand Ghana cities mm-hmm. then. And the contract was on 27th January. We had never done a mass contract before. I mean, our first time we just did two pieces. And now we've taken the contract that we have to provide thousand slices. We started around 5.30 a.m. in the morning. We ended around 10.30 p.m. You're baking the whole day. And we were able to produce only 350 slices. <laughs> no! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 350. And not even one quarter of what you require. Big boss. I mean, so we sent it to the event. We were even late. She was a bit pissed. I was like, Charlie, this is our first time. All, but we try. So this 350 we do. So the other 650, gone. If we buy some meat pie or something. <laughs> it was terrible. And you know, you know the funny yeah. thing? We bought inventory for two thousand, for thousand slices. I was going to ask about inventory and packaging and all that. So now, we bought the inventory. We can't sell the inventory back to the suppliers. Mm-hmm. We have to bear that cost of the extra six fifty and get paid for the three fifty. So on our first contract, we made a loss. But it didn't deter you. Oh no, no. I mean, I, I didn't even realize. I, I realized you missed something about accounting. Those times I wasn't doing that, so I was actually spending from my pockets. So no, well, you are not the first one. I mean, also did for a whole year. Okay, he was using his school fees to do it. Okay, for a very long time. And you I get there. That, yeah, <laughs> eventually it pays off, doesn't yeah. it? Yeah, eventually yeah. Pays personally, off. my hostel fees, my other guys' hostel fees. I mean, we have raised a lot of things to you know keep the business running. But you believed in it. Yes, I I never. You had the conviction. Yes, and, and and I think sometimes the conviction is what you require. Everything also fall in line. Yeah, just keep going. Yeah, I mean sometimes you n- you never see the road, but keep mm. going keep going the failures will come i mean I, I i recorded a couple of failures you know that man that i started at pizza i was also doing another event at mickling hotel mm-hmm. the name of the event was other concerts mm-hmm. and i always say to myself that if i had had a mentor mm-hmm. those days i wouldn't have even tried that event at all mm-hmm. but thanks to god i have a mentor now so mm-hmm. i mean it will be very difficult for me to make certain mistakes now yeah. i remember that event um it happened on 10 february it was a pre vows day concert. You know, I told you I wanted to do things for money. So, I mean, once I'm going to get money, once I just business get, exactly savvy, business I'm involved. So, that event, a day to the program, we lost a money to an accident in yeah. 2018. Yeah. The program featured Kwabna Kwabna, Adina, and you're supposed to get Kim Promise on board as well. Can you imagine that a program that we invested about 84,000, I got only 6,000 cities as, you know, Proceeds. Yeah, re- proceeds. I mean, not not profits. I mean, revenue. You're kidding. So 6,000 minus 84 is 78. You're out of pocket by that much. It wasn't even my money. I involved family, <laughs> I involved friends, and I got into debts from that time. Wow. And even through those debts, I was still selling the pizza. It wasn't normal. I don't know where I got that energy from. I don't know where mm. I got that strength from. But I just wake up every day, and I go like, it will work out. 
so let's keep working yeah it will work out i remember there's a guy called martin who works with us one day we were working and one of the guys that i used to all came around he was trying to create a scene so i just stopped working i moved to him i went to talk to him and i came back and i started working and martin was like chris how do you how do, how do you do it because it's like i maintained the composure as if there was nothing wrong yeah. and i kept doing that for like two years so from 2018 somewhere in june we closed down because we're out of funds mm. and as as young as we were i mean as 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 little as we as a startup we, we believed in our branding so the little money we get we invest into our packaging we invest into our art we invest into how we produce our stuff so we were always running out of money but i just had that conviction that let's keep investing into it it will pay off one day mm-hmm. so we broke uh, we closed down in june we opened somewhere in august that was when national service was about to start so my other guy Eben, was supposed to go to national college to teach as national service and i was posted to Kane university as a teaching assistant mm-hmm. and even made a sacrifice he was like chris i'm not going to do this national service i'll stay back for one year if it doesn't work out after one year then i'll know that it's not going to work out mm-hmm. so he sacrificed the national service not because i was going to pay him i mean we are all working mm-hmm. so in the morning when i'm going to the college as a ta then he also we all pick the trust key together then we drop around victory towers that's where we got the shop mm-hmm. then he will so we move from our, our hostel room to a shop mm-hmm. with our hostel fees <laughs> so, we, so we are going hostel fees for national service. We you know, this is why I haven't asked you about funding because you are telling us your story already <laughs> where you were getting the money from. And it was from everywhere else. Every, everywhere. I mean, <laughs> once once the money is available, we just pick it. So we got the, the shop down there. So he would drop at the hostel. Then I will continue to the college. And then when I close from class, I join him there. And there were several times he would move from the shop and come and call me from the lecture theater mm-hmm. that Charlie Pizza was is finished. You have to come and prepare it. I mean, he didn't know the cooking aspect. Mm-hmm. And I was the chef, but then he's more of the after chef. What's next? I mean, any other time apart from chef, he was doing Packaging, it. Packaging, preparing exactly. it. Exactly. Prepare for delivery, moving it. Correct. So he will move and come and call me. Then I just move from the lecture hall and go and prepare this sauce. And then by the time I leave there, Charlie, everything is messed up. And I still go to class with it. Mm. And I, I, I enjoyed going to class because it was an avenue for me to also market Whatever I was your network, to the and that's what I was going to talk about. That yeah. what I hear you talk about is that you took advantage of your network. Yes, and your network were your friends. Yes, the people you had contested with. Yes, for for election. Yes, and there were people in your class you were teaching. Yeah. all of those people were part of your network. Exactly, and it's important that if you're starting a business, you take advantage of your network. Where do you go to church? Where do you play football? Who are the people who are in your good news club? Where do you you know you join some choir? Those are the people who believe in you. And remember that they. Even if they don't believe in your business, you are connected to them by something else before their business came. So they are obliged to give you a hearing. Exactly. And that's where you start from, yeah. really. You yeah. know. So, so tell us about subsequent orders that you got. Okay, so I, I would want to, you know, continue from where I... So Go ahead, go ahead. Throughout those times in 2018, somewhere in October, mm-hmm. Kenya had a demonstration. The school was closed. And our business was solely dependent on students. On campus. So for about four weeks... We were out of business. Mm. We resumed in October, uh, November 22nd, thereabouts. And then, luckily, we got some contracts for this student socializing program that they used to do. And we got some money. But there was a problem. Payment delayed. Mm. So, we had a contract to serve about 500 students. I mean, not only pizza, rice, and other things. Mm-hmm. And it's supposed to be pre-financed by us because, you know, the school system, they have to present invoices to the accounts for it to be vetted. The bureaucracy and the red tape was too Yes. Much. So we did all these events by taking loan from elsewhere to fund, I mean, the, the, the program, hoping mm-hmm. that we're going to get paid in the next week. Mm. Kenya University went on break, and then they had to resume the following year, January, somewhere so, seven. So for one year, you didn't get paid? Oh, no, 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 no. From December to the next year. To, to, the, so to January. Okay, it's just the following And week. then the person we took the money from was expecting that money that week. Mm. So because we couldn't pay on time, the interest on the loan was even higher than the profit we're going to make from that contract. So you know what happened? We lost our profit and it ended up being in debt again. Wow. Yes. That means that you were, you were bleeding on a, on a financial um, literacy side. It was side. massive, massive bleeding. I mean, I lost a lot of blood. <laughs> I don't know how it's still alive. <laughs> you guys were hemorrhaging. Yes, I mean, we were just... And then, you know what? Whenever these things happen, it, it doesn't discourage me. And sometimes, even will be like, that is that is why you are you. 
So don't, 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 don't stop going. That's why you are you. That's why it is you who no is matter how many times part. you fail, just Mm-mm. keep going. Mm-mm. So in 2019, we struggled January, February, somewhere March, April, we closed down again. Wow. A second oh, time. Oh, I mean, we closed down about four times. We closed, we opened, we closed, we opened until June, 2019, June. I remember I told the Ben that, bro, we don't have to, we don't have to stay here. It seems we are, we are stuck at one point. I want us to move. Let's move out of Kumasi. Mm-hmm. And let's go with our document. Something that shows that we do business because I believe that this thing is going to work. Everyone was like, yes, it's going to work, but how? I was like, we need big money. I mean, the monies we are working with, we need big money. Mm-hmm. Even with our raw materials. If you are getting big money, we can buy in bulk and cut down cost. We can do this and do that and do that. It was like, yes, it's true, but how? So we left, we left Kumase. It was a move of faith. We didn't know where we were going to. We just left Kumase to Accra. Eben lives in Tema. I was at Dansoman, but then we just left. So we came to Accra, we moved to Tema, I was with Eben in, mm-hmm. um, uh, with his sister. Mm-hmm. You know, all those times, I was supposed to further my education outside camp. Mm-hmm. And I was tagged as a stubborn boy because I didn't want to go to school. And I'm we still to stay in self visa Exactly. And actually, also it doesn't top make sense. class students. Yes. So I had some, you know, friction with my family because, like, I'm being stubborn. They don't know what is over me. Some even felt that I'm being worked by. You're some probably going to become Gardner's first NASA. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so while staying with Eben, those times I I lost the touch with my family because you know I was painted as a bad boy, and I understand and, them. And that was a big sacrifice. Oh yes, I mean I I was ready to risk everything for that. I understood them at a point because. Like they want to carve your life for you. They want to. But, but are they proud of you today? Oh yes. They pay oh, yes, them, yes, they? yes. So with Eben, we had radio. I mean, somebody's radio. Not even in that house. Do you have a business? Are you a startup? Do you want funding? Blah blah blah. Call this number. I say, hey. <laughs> <laughs> it's me. They're talking to us. Yes. So I picked the number. I called, and that was Quick Angels. Mm. Right here, circle. Yeah. And. You know, we've been moving around circle. We never saw that building, but it was there. Mm-hmm. So we picked the number. I called. We went in. We told them, okay, this is what we do. We sell pizza. We are from K University. Mm-hmm. Uh, the business consultant we met, Mrs. Lamte, she was like, but why do you want to sell pizza? I mean, first class student. And I went to was reading mathematics. Equally good. He also got scholarship to go to the States to further, I mean, to do his master's. People said, no, you want to sell pizza. Yes. So she was Ghana like... Ghana thanks you for your sacrifice. <laughs> <laughs> so... Um, he was like, then there must be something special about yeah. why you want to sell pizza. So she even got interested. She was like, okay, then gather your business plan and come for pitching. Mm-hmm. We said, okay. So we left. And then yesterday was exactly three years that we went for pitching. 28th June. Wow. Yes. So. Were you successful? Excellent. Mm. So we left, came back on 28th June in 2019. We went with samples of the pizza. How we got the samples ready, I don't want to even go there. That was another hassle on this one. Mm. But we just got the samples ready. We went in. And then we started our pitch around 10 p.m. Whilst we were there, people were going in, coming out, going in, coming out. I was like, ah, so these people, don't they close? It's 10. And they are still in the office working. Mm-hmm. So we started with our presentation. We gave out, I mean, a brief history about us, what we've been doing. We gave out the figures, I mean... Our production cost, you know, the gross profit margin, you know, because we we do we did actuarial science and maths. I mean, those figures are easy for us to exactly. Easily, we did that, and that was when we won the funding. And since then, it's been success back to back to back to back. And the mentor I was speaking about is actually the CEO, Mm -hmm. uh, uh, the CEO and the founder of Quick Angels, Mr. Richard Niamakwe. Right. That man, I don't know, but then maybe you are yet to experience him. The little I've learned from him. You see, some of his workers even say that I'm like Junior junior Richard because mm-hmm. whatever he tells you in business, if it doesn't happen today, it happen tomorrow. So he's probably had a lot of experience. A lot. So I mean, so much experience. Mm. He's, the, he's, the, he's the founder of Quick Credit. Right. Yes. I mean, if, you, if you've seen their cars moving up and down yes. here and there, and the number of people he's been supporting with loans in a day. I mean, in a week, you have no idea. Richard Ni Amakwe. Yes. Kwe, you said. Yes. Good afternoon to you, sir, and thank you for supporting 
young <laughs> entrepreneurs in Ghana, uh, like Chicken Man and Pizza, pizza Man. man yeah. How did you start doing chicken? Answer that for me, and then we'll get interactive. With the chicken? Yes. How did we start? Okay, so, after, so initially, it was just Pizza Man. Okay. And then the next day, I think after our pitching, we had another meeting. And, you know, we had a lot of ideas already. So he was like, what is the most consumed food in Ghana? Like, it is rice. <laughs> rice goes with what? Mm -hmm. Chicken. So if there's pizza man and you want to sell chicken, then we call it chicken man. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, the chicken man idea came two days after we just got the funding. It's like, okay, we can't be selling pizza and throughout. Yeah. We have to give customers varieties. If you don't want pizza today, you can eat jollof with chicken. You can mm -hmm. eat fried rice with chicken. And we decided to stick with chicken only. So we don't sell beef, you don't sell fish, it's just chicken. Right. So if there's pizza man, then there'll be chicken man. That's how the chicken man idea came about. But it's distinctive, it's different. Because I've heard some of your people talk, and um, I'm hoping that we can get through to some of them, some of your customers. Mm -hmm. talk. And there's a particular taste, mm -hmm. for which reason they keep coming back. Yes. So you did something different with your recipe. Well, yeah, I mean, we just use the local spices. Mm. And then, make, I mean, I told you I've been cooking since eight, so... Mm. I mean, com combining ingredients is... is Did some, is, some yes. magic somewhere. <laughs> interesting, interesting, yeah. interesting. If you just joined us, this is Masterclass here on your Superstation Joy 99.7. We're going to be getting interactive right now. Um, but before we do that, we'll take a quick message from our sponsors. We'll be right back. Welcome back. If you just tuned in, this is Masterclass here on your Superstation Joy 99.7. We're still here on the Startup Dialogue series. And today, we're spending time here with Christian Bwachi Yadom, otherwise also known as the Chicken Man or the Pizza Man. He's also telling us his story, rather interesting story. We'll be opening the phone line shortly so that you can also ask your questions or make contributions. And we're hoping to also get a call through to one of his customers so that they can give us an independent opinion of the experience they've had with him. But definitely, I mean, these are young Ghanaians who are doing it and are an inspirational story for everyone who also wants to do business if you've got any motor vehicle of any kind before we get interactive girl has some great news for you girl is rewarding all of his prepaying go customers with up to two pesos later discount on all fuel purchased elevate your goodness by joining the girl go club today and enjoy up to three pesos later discount on all fuel purchased girl good energy girl yeah nara yeah their phone lines are now open numbers to call zero three zero two two one six five four one that's zero three zero two two one six five four one. You can also send us your comments on zero five five one 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 nine nine seven. Um, suffice it to say that uh, Christian has offered to give the first five callers. You notice that all of the people who have been coming here on the show are also giving out freebies to our listeners because we also want it to be a part of our success story. So he's offered to give um, a lunch pack uh, to the first five callers: Chicken Man, Pizza Man. So after you are done speaking to me on air, if you do put your call through. Please stay on the line and speak to our production crew who will take your details and then tell you how you can access um, Chicken Man or Pizza Man this afternoon because you called us. Phone lines are now open. Numbers to call 0302-216-541. You can also send us your comments on 055 While we're waiting for the phone lines to ring, let me ask you this about challenges. I know you talked about having shut down about four times and all of that. But what, what do you consider to be the greatest challenge which almost made you stop? That was a battle between uh, me deciding to go to school or sell pizza. You know, in 2020, March, mm. after the 2019 efforts failed for me to go outside, I mean, mm. there was still another, I mean, chance for me to go. Mm. So I actually left Germany. I was in Berlin. Mm. I left on 9th March, and the plan was to return the following week without the notice of my family. I just wanted to go for them to know that I'm out. Mm -hmm. And I returned the, the following week. And then the following week, uh, there was a declaration of lockdown. Because of No. COVID. So I had to stay. <laughs> I had to stay in Germany for like three months before coming back to Ghana. And whilst I was there, you know, you see that business. Those times, we just came USD branch. Just one branch. And we were not even selling up to 10000 a day. And Who that thought for me? I've got a caller on the line. Good afternoon. You welcome to Masterclass. Your name and where you're calling from. Yeah. My name is Yauduku. Yauduku. Yeah, where are you calling me yeah. from this afternoon? Actually, I, I'm in town. So, oh, in Accra. But, but in, okay, in Accra. Yeah, I, you, I say no condition. Right. You're, you're the first person who has called me today. So you've won for yourself a lunch pack from Chicken Man this afternoon. Thank you very much. So stay on the line once we're done speaking and then my, my crew will speak to you. Okay. Talk to me, yo. Yeah. Um, 
In fact, I, I stay in North Carnation area, and I saw their restaurant that they just opened. And I went in there. I've, I've been there a couple of times already, and I want to say their food is great. Wow. But what really excites me the first time I, I went there, I was just a, li- a little bit curious mm. that this church restaurant are coming up. So I asked and I wanted to know whether the owners were Ghanaians. And I spoke to <laughs> so, some of your um, uh, ladies there. I mean, wait, wait, wait. I spent some time just to be sure. Mm. And I am excited and happy to see such things happening in this country. Thank you. God Thank bless you. you. May you be bigger and more successful than what you've done. Mm. These are the stories I'm so proud of. Because mm. I always get worried that almost every restaurant in town belongs to some foreigner out there and we all go and buy skin and eat. I'm so happy that a Ghanaian has done this. Wow. Thank you wow. so much. God bless you. Thank you so God much, Yao. You. We're grateful and we're inspired to do more. The purpose of this Startup Dialogue series is to inspire so that people can do more. I've got some messages on social media. Okay. But before I go there, I've got another caller on the line. Good afternoon. You're welcome to Masterclass. Your name and where you're calling from. Good afternoon. My name is Samuel. I'm calling from Kutubabi. How is Kutubabi this afternoon, Samuel? Oh, very well, very close. Chris. Great, great. You won for yourself a lunch pack from Pizza Man this afternoon. So stay on the line once we're done speaking, and my production crew will take your details. I'm grateful. Talk to me. I'm also a level 200 at Ghana Telecom University. Right. And I've learned that effective appreciates peace. The people you associate with to your campus, mm-hmm. they are the same people that help you when you are in need. Indeed. Indeed. So you need to build a good relationship so that when you start a business, it is easy to, for you to market. Right. That's what I've learned from you this afternoon. Thank you so much. Watch your associations. That's a contribution this afternoon. I've got a comment on social media. This one is from Napo. Napo says, this is an inspiring story. Success does not come cheap. Thank you, Napo, for your comment. I've got another one. Um, this one says, Josephine from Kasua says, I just decided to try Pizza Man as Chicken Man. Mm-hmm. He's done a great job, and I admire him so much. Keep it up. This is Josephine from Kasua. Josephine, thank you for reaching out to us. There's someone who says, um, okay, this is Rodney Boating Sapong. Rodney says, I know him so well, and everything Chris B is saying <laughs> is true. God bless him. There's someone who says that the WhatsApp people also want... Uh, free pizza. <laughs> Can I have that message? Um, I'm, I'm going to... Oh, this is Na. I knew it was going to be Na. Na, good afternoon to you. Okay, so Na, um, I will use my... My... <laughs> my presenter powers to give you one of the pizzas this afternoon. You are my third winner for today, even though you haven't called. You are a consistent winner, so... Um, reach out to us, send your details, and then we'll try and reach out to you. Uh, and then you've, you've won for yourself some pizza. I've got another caller on the line. Good afternoon. You're welcome to Masterclass. Your name and where you're calling. I think I've lost the caller. Please call back. We definitely want to hear your comments. I've got Edem from Tem on social media. Edem says, Christian's business story is very inspiring. I congratulate him for holding on to the vision despite the diversion to travel out of Ghana. And this is Edem from Tema. Edem from Tema, thank you so much for your comments. Let's keep the comments coming too. <laughs> Somebody says, we are here to... Um, who is that? Is it about my pizza to Na? Na is a, an ardent listener of my show. So, um, you didn't add your name. If you had added your name, I would have given you an extra pizza. But while we're waiting for the phone lines to ring, uh, I'm, see if you can get Hannah for me on the line. I want to speak to Hannah this afternoon. Hannah is a client of um, Chicken Man, and uh, we're trying to get some independent opinion from her. But tell us the most challenging experience that yeah. you had. So, um, <clears throat> as I said, um, I had to decide mm-hmm. to choose whether I should further my education, do the master's in, uh, it was finance and investment, or return to Ghana and sell pizza. You know, I've had to make that decision before. Okay. I will say it on air. I'll tell you off air the decision I made. Okay. I had to decide, hmm, if I say people will know the <laughs> end of it, but I had to make such a decision. It, it wasn't an easy decision. That's yeah. why I respect the decision that you made yeah. so much. So what did you do? So... I mean, I, I spoke to my mentor. I was like, come on, let's make money together. Mm-hmm. And it was easy for me to believe because I've seen him living the life I've, I've been dreaming of. So, mm-hmm. I was like, okay, then I'm coming. 
So I had to join the repatriation flight those days. I didn't even wait for them to open borders. Mm. So somewhere 21st June, I joined the repatriation flight to Ghana. We went for quarantine at Aliza Hotel. We stayed there for 14 days. I remember when I got to Ghana, I didn't even have cash on me. So he's the one who even paid for my quarantine fee. This time we were paying like 800 cities a day. Wow. Yeah, we paid for everything. I went for quarantine. I came out. When I left, the very first place to go to was his office. Mm. I've arrived and I'm in for business. And my other guy, Eben, was so excited because when I left, he felt like a part of him a is gone. A part of him was gone. Yeah. How does he continue? Yes. And I came back. I mean, the energy came and, you know, we started moving. So from Kenya USD, we worked for like 11 months. We opened our second branch the same year in 2020 at Sofo Line in Kumase. Then the following year in 2020, uh, 2021, we did a Hojo branch in June, making three. That was just last year, June. So a year today, we had just three branches. Then from a Hojo in June, in July, we did Swami, making four. In August, September, we did airport, making five. And then um, in November, we did uh, Dakoju, making six. And that was the first pizza drive through we have in Ghana. Pizza drive through I mean, mm. we don't have pizza drive through in Ghana. We brought the first pizza drive through mm -hmm. Then in December, we came to Accra last year with four, putting us to ten. Wow. And then this year, we did February, Wager. We did May, Tema. And another one in Kumasi again, giving us 13. Let me ask you this question. Uh -huh. When I, I hear stories like this, I think value chain. Yeah. So who's who's providing your water? Who's providing your boxes? Mm. Who's taking out your trash? Who's, <laughs> who's doing your deliveries? Okay. How do other people plug in to your value chain also? We have we have a couple of Ghanaian businesses that we are working with. So So people can get in touch with you and plug into your business. Oh, sure. Into your value chain. If they have a good offer and they are providing us with good you know products why not yeah. Yeah. right you'll be giving us your final comments shortly um, sure. but i've got a few more comments on social media uh, can, okay this one is from veronica this is good afternoon please this is veronica can he please share some of the branches so i can be there very quickly can you just just i'm really proud of him kudos just so in accra we have dan soman uh, exhibition we have our mm -hmm. we have wager scc uh, we have kaswa the new market we have Tema, Total Falling Station, Comte 10, Hospital Road. We have East Ligon. That's quite popular. We have uh, Nana Chrome Falling Station on the road to East Ligon Hills. We have Kissiman, close to uh, Kissiman Melcom. Mm -hmm. We have um, uh, <laughs> a lot. We have uh, Kumasi KNUST. We yeah. have Sofoline. We have Ahonjo. We have Macro. We have Dakojom. Um, we have um, uh, Tanoso, opposite the University of Education, Miniba. Mm -hmm. And we have a uh, airport runabout in Kumasi. Yeah. And you can just go online and check them out. I mean, I checked them out before I came here. Yeah. These days, Google will help you do everything. Kweku Asari Frimpong from Teshi says, I really enjoy your conversations. Good afternoon, sir. I want to start my own business by the startup money. Please look no further. We just talked about quick angels. Get in touch with. Is that a number you want to put out? I can I can give the contact of the business consultant out. Please. I mean, so just just make it ready. He'll put a number out when he's rounding up, and then you get in touch with these guys, and they'll help you. And it's not just Quick Angels. There are a lot of people who are waiting to um, help you uh, with your businesses. This one says Mamli from Dansuman. I'm so impressed about the story. Good afternoon, Yao. You have to send me one of the pieces to try. <laughs> I always listen to Masterclass, Mamli, because you have asked. Uh, the Bible says that ask and you shall receive. So you are my fourth winner for today you also get a, a lunch pack but we need your details so that the crew can reach out to you i've got one more pizza to give out but i think my time is up this one is norbert norbert says hello good afternoon my sister and i also want some pizza hey all right, wow, though. okay so you get my fifth pizza for today my production crew will take note of that and reach out to you final comments if someone is listening today speak directly to them inspire them in about 30 seconds and let's okay. wrap up so there is nothing like a perfect condition when you say all things being equal, all things will never be equal. So if you want to start something, don't 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 wait for anything. I mean, it starts. If you don't take step one, you will never see step two. If you want to see the first ten steps before you move, then I'm sorry, you will never move. Mm. I mean, you will never see even the second step. But just just keep moving. When you get to the bridge, you cross it. Keep moving. And if you share your dream to someone and the person doesn't understand you, don't stress. End the conversation. There are people who will buy into your idea, and trust me, they will, they will just love and support whatever you want to do. And believe in yourself. And don't do things because people are doing it. Look within you. 
there's something special in you and you can just make so much out of it than to be looking at people that's what i can say is there yeah. a number we want to put out and uh, my a number for if anybody wants to call if you want to order for pizza or want to reach me want to reach you <laughs> so that you can mentor them wow or lead them to richard <laughs> richard didn't get time i mean it's okay, so busy so yes yeah, so you you will mentor them then. okay so my my call number is zero two zero six five six two eight one nine okay you can take yeah. that again slowly zero two zero six five six two eight one nine okay tom brown you, i've seen your question but I'm, i've run out of time so he says tom brown is asking that this is exciting and he's impressed about how fast the surge in accra is is happening for the brand my question is how is he able to go opening places when others are not fully established he doesn't stop he keeps going <laughs> but call the number and you get a, a full version of the story this has been another edition of the startup dialogue series here on masterclass exciting conversation with christian Boachi adam otherwise known as the pizza man or the chicken man and so we come your way again with another edition of masterclass thank you for joining us today and see you same time next week <music>